Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the impact of social determinants on lung cancer care. My name is Sherry Erkman. I am a professor of thoracic surgery at Temple University Health Systems. Now, when we think about the social determinants of lung cancer care, it's best to uh, subcategorize this in terms of risk, screening, and treatment, and how social determinants impact each of these uh, subcategories in the continuum of lung cancer care. When we look at risk, of course, we know that smoking is the highest risk factor for lung cancer. Smokers are five to 10 more times likely to get lung cancer than non-smokers. And when we look at the socioeconomic impact and how this uh, relates to smoking risk, we know that adults below the poverty level are twice as likely to be smokers than those who are in higher income brackets. Similarly, we know that people with a high school education or less are three times more likely to be a smoker than those who are college educated. So economics and education level directly impact the likelihood of being a smoker. And furthermore, those in lower education and low income brackets are likely to start smoking at an earlier age, to smoke for longer, and to smoke more cigarettes. And so this risk of smoking, uh, it's really part of a directed uh, strategy that many tobacco companies had to target low-income neighborhoods. We know that there are more tobacco retailers in low-income neighborhoods and that the tobacco industry has targeted uh, with direct coupons, um, point of sale discounts, direct mailing coupons, and targeted brands to lower income um, neighborhoods. So the risk of smoking is higher in lower socioeconomic strata. And it's uh, looking not only at lower socioeconomic uh, strata and how they relate, but even when we adjust for smoking behavior and for education, we know that uh, particularly underserved neighborhoods still have higher risk of lung cancer. So there's something beyond uh, income, beyond education, and drilling down into this a little bit more, it's clearly multifactorial, but we also have to look at other social determinants of risk. Um, we can look at comorbidities. Of course, we know that uh, COPD any version of it, whether it be through uh, documentation of PFTs or radiographic images or a number of exacerbations, that COPD puts people at uh, one and a half to almost three times the likelihood of having cancer, lung cancer, than those without COPD. Um, HPV is detected in 20% of lung cancer cases. TB, asthma, asthma, and sarcoidosis are all also relative risks for contracting lung cancer. So comorbidities are an often overlooked risk of lung cancer. When we look at lung cancer risk, we also have to consider genetics. Um, this, is, uh, this is a slide looking at the incidence of lung cancer. And lung cancer incidence is much higher in African-Americans, as you can see in the red line. Um, all races are in this black line behind the yellow line, which represents a white population. Um, and interestingly, we're looking at Asian and Pacific Islanders in blue, uh, Native American in green, and Hispata Hispanic Latinx in purple, and the incidence of lung cancer is actually lower. So again, even race is not the only factor in uh, understanding risk. When we look at familial risk, we know that someone with lung cancer, a family member with lung cancer, a primary family member with lung cancer increases the relative risk of getting cancer by about two and a half to four times. And even uh, second degree relatives getting lung cancer, that puts someone at risk uh, one to four times. And the increasing number of people in a particular family who've been affected by lung cancer, well, that increases uh, the risk of lung cancer. So 
We talked about uh, smoking, we talked about genetic risk, we talked about familial risk, and additionally, when we think of social determinants, we also have to consider environmental risks. Um, radon is the number one cause of lung cancer in non-smokers, and it is the number two cause behind smoking for lung cancer in the United States. And radon exposure and smoking has a synergistic effect. Um, it's not surprising that radon exposure is disproportionately burdened uh, within underserved communities, perhaps because of a lack of awareness or lack of resources to test and mitigate. Similarly, asbestos increases the risk of lung cancer by five times. And again, uh, households the, the, where the income is low, uh, socioeconomic status is low, that exposure to asbestos is increased. Um, people with income less than $25,000 a year are four times more likely to live in an unhealthy home. African Americans are two times more likely to live in an in unhealthy home with exposure to asbestos and radon, and also people with disabilities. Um, pollution is always a factor. It's uh, really difficult to parse that out from other environmental factors, but we know, again, pollution is disproportionately impacting um, underserved communities. Uh, worldwide, we are also considering biomass burning and um, coal burning for cooking and for home heating. And worldwide, biomass burning is also a factor impacting lung cancer and disparities. So really looking at risk, socioeconomic status results in an increased risk of lung cancer incidence, an increased risk of dying from lung cancer, and more so than any other cancer. So when we look at the continuum, it's not only the risk, but also the detection of lung cancer. And there are disparities in the detection of lung cancer. When we look at screening, we know that screening can decrease the risk of lung cancer by 20 to 26%. And this is a benefit that is actually greatest among Black and African Americans. Unfortunately, people are not uh, engaging in screening. Of all people who are eligible, three to six percent of people are actually getting screened, and minorities are half as likely to be screened. When we look at um, why this is, there are racial disparities in the knowledge of lung cancer and lung cancer screening, particularly among African Americans. And for those in, with low socioeconomic status, we've also seen that multiple steps of lung cancer getting the scan, um, getting the follow-up results and follow-up care, this also poses a barrier to people uh, facing other challenges. So um, of those people who are screened, racial and ethnic minorities have a higher cancer detection rate. And we know that minority populations have a low adherence to follow-up care. Now, why is follow-up care important? Well. We cannot impact survival if screen-detected cancers are not treated. So everyone who has a positive screen must be followed through with care and treatment. And follow-up care in the National Lung Screening Trial was upwards of 95%, even in subsequent annual screens. And in fact, uh, 32 to 59% of lung cancers were detected not in year one of screening, but in subsequent years. So follow-up of positive screens and annual screening is critical to the efficacy of lung cancer screening and early detection. Follow-up is critical. Unfortunately, we know follow-up care and annual screening rates are low among underserved communities. And if we cannot engage high-risk people, particularly in underserved communities, if we cannot engage them in screening, then we cannot get them from risk to early detection and treatment. And if people aren't being screened, then we widen the disparity of lung cancer care. And even when we look at uh, detected cancer, we know that African-Americans have a longer time to definitive treatment. 
and more African Americans experience a long delay of eight weeks or more. And a delay of eight weeks or more results in pathologic upstaging and worse overall survival. And so even upon detection and evaluation, there is a known disparity in lung cancer care. When we look at treatment and social determinants of uh, lung cancer mortality, we know that Black and African Americans have the lowest median survival. This is much lower survival than all other races. Additionally, the graph looks very similar to patients in the lowest socioeconomic quartile. They have significantly worse survival compared to all other quartiles. So when we look at the details of treatment, we know that there's a difference in treatment based on uh, socioeconomic status and race, and that it impacts people who are offered uh, VATS and surgery, the mortality of those who undergo uh, thoracoscopic resection is higher among African Americans, the chances of not getting the needed adjuvant chemotherapy, and the um, chances of offering alternatives to surgery all of that is lower in um, racial and ethnic minorities and uh, underserved communities. And when you look at intersecting socioeconomic disadvantages, um, a factor of uh, education, of race, of um, uh, income, as you start to add up the socioeconomic disadvantages, so do you increase the odds of non-standard therapy, and that relates to success in overall treatment and um, survival. So increasing socioeconomic disadvantages, as you start to add on an to each disadvantage, the risk of inferior care uh, increases. And this is work done uh, by two groups, uh, Dr. David uh, and Dr. Evans, and um, you know, definitely also showing how our surgeon community is contributing to the understanding of disparities in lung cancer care. As we start to look at um, lung cancer treatment, uh, it's thought that really this is an issue of uh, access and delivery. And within a study of the Veterans Affairs uh, Central Cancer Registry, they observed no disparity in terms of race of receipt of operation, receipt of radiation, survival after surgery, and overall survival. And they concluded that um, disparity is really a disparity of access and delivery. And if we can give equitable care, that there's every opportunity that we can deliver equal survival. Um, as a follow-up to this, uh, Dr. Black at Dartmouth did a survey of um, treatment, adjusting for access. Even adjusting for access, um, they found that African Americans and Blacks experienced worse overall survival compared to other races. This worse overall survival was not from lung cancer, interestingly, but from competing causes of death like cardiovascular disease and other cancers. So even if we were to create an ideal world with equitable access and delivery of lung cancer care, the interesting thing is that there is worse survival because we have to think about the context and the whole patient, and the whole patient may be at higher risk from competing comorbidities and, and other causes of death. Very important to see that it's not just an issue of lung cancer and lung cancer care. It's really a disparity that traverses uh, uh, many specialties. So socioeconomic disparity in lung cancer uh, can be subdivided into understanding uh, the disparities of risk of lung cancer, the disparities in screening and early detection, and in the treatment. And in a follow-up talk, we will look at the strategies to intervene and mitigate the disparities of lung cancer, um, lung cancer care. 
So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me. I am uh, Sherry Erkman from Temple Health. Thank you.